I found this beautiful taffeta in my fabric stash. I have no recollection of purchasing it, no idea of what I intended to sew, but I was ecstatic when I measured out six and a half yards of it. I am going to endeavor once again to make a formal gown for my wedding anniversary. Two years ago, I sewed a dress using this vintage reproduction sewing pattern and some authentic vintage beaded trim. You'll be able to find that video after this one if you should choose to watch. For this year's dress, I'm going with another vintage reproduction pattern also from Lady Marlowe. I will leave links to both sewing patterns below. However, it's a lot different. I am different. I am going into this sewing project with more self-confidence and a lot more skill than when I sewed that dress two years ago. I have wanted to make this dress for a very long time. I'm so happy to finally be taking it on. This silhouette is what I absolutely love about vintage fashion and I'm really excited. So I proceeded with cutting out the giant skirt piece. It is so big, in fact, that it has to be pieced together, hence the glue stick. I then get out the ruler and proceed with removing six inches off the bottom of this gown. One, to save fabric, and two, because I'm only 5'3", and mostly all of these patterns are always too long for me. But ooh, I wish I had only took off five. But what can you do? Measure twice, cut once. That's how that works. Now you see me pinning down the bodice pieces. It's a front and a back. I love how this dress was just a few pieces and that makes it look so simple. But what I have learned over the past few years with my sewing is with these type of dresses or sewing patterns, they look simple enough and they are, but it is the finishing work that takes the time and ability. You must work with precision and you cannot rush the process or take shortcuts if you want the investment of your time and resources to pay a return. So after cutting out the bodice, I am working on the skirt pieces. With the skirt, you're gonna cut four of these and of your fabric and you're gonna cut four of your lining and then I also cut four of crinoline. So in between my skirt and my lining, there is a layer of crinoline because I wanted the extra volume and it was definitely a very good decision. I hate cutting fabric on the floor, but these pieces were so big. So that's what we had to do and that's what I did several times. So the skirt is where I'm going to start. It's four pieces. They were so big. It was such a job getting it cut out. But they also want me to line it, which I haven't really decided if I'm going to do or not. Possibly. But to start, we're just going to seam the four pieces. And then they want the left side open above this notch. And that's where we're going to start. I have been asked many times about the dress, the one for my anniversary two years ago, the one that I made the video about that you're going to go watch when you finish with this one. Anyway, I have been asked several times if I wore it on my anniversary since I only shared final photos of it on the dress form. And the truth is, I did not wear it on my anniversary. I was afraid. Afraid that it would look homemade. Afraid I would be uncomfortable with the weight of that beautiful vintage trim that was not suited for that fabric I chose or that it wasn't special enough for such a special day. I doubted the quality of my own work. I doubted me, which is something sewing has made me do more than anything ever has. Maybe that is why I love it so much. I've always loved a good challenge. I've always loved things that made me step outside of what I'm comfortable with, that pushed me, that made me grow. So I'm sure it has a lot to do with it.
So I have pinned and seamed and pinned and seamed and pinned and seamed and did that four times. And we have what is a skirt. And that is simple enough. It's the hem that is always a thing with these big skirts, but we'll get to that soon. Where was I with my thoughts? Oh, the dress. Okay, so the main reason why I didn't wear the dress was I was afraid I would be embarrassed with it on in such a high quality restaurant on such a high stakes for memories day. I was worried that my dress wasn't of quality enough, I guess, to mark the anniversary of the day we decided on joining our lives together for as close as we can get to forever. And looking back, I had every right to feel that way. It did look homemade, it was, and it was full of mistakes, but it was so special and would have made the memory even more special. So honestly, I still regret not wearing it. So much so that I had packed it away. But as I was sewing this dress, I was reflecting on the various journeys in my life. Anniversaries tend to make me nostalgic in that way. And not even just my wedding anniversary. It seems any approaching anniversary, whether it marks a happy day in my life or a sad one, sends me down a route of reminiscing. I can't be the only one this happens to. Please tell me that I am not. I digress. As I reflect on my marriage in particular, I realize that you can't just pack mistakes, fear, or embarrassment away. What does that accomplish? What does that change? How does that help? I think this is why my husband and I have been together for so many years, since childhood actually. It's because we knew we would make mistakes. We have always been acutely aware of the work it would take because we started so young to grow together and individually. So we have always confronted our issues head on. We deal, we get uncomfortable, we learn, we love, we move forward. I then had this thought that I would be so much more assured in my sewing if I applied this same MO, the one that I applied to my marriage and to motherhood, to learning this craft that brings me so much joy and just as often leaves me quite frustrated. So I pulled out that dress, the one from two years ago, and I studied it, taking note of what was done right, what was done wrong, and what I would do differently now. It's a beautiful dress, even with its flaws. I've had a beautiful marriage, even with its flaws. I'm very excited for the growth I've made in all aspects of my life over the past couple years. A lot of it, this may sound crazy, has to do with this channel and sewing and the journey of self-discovery and identity that I have been on as for so long I've been in a relationship and being a mother and all of those things and when I started this channel as something that was just for me not even really knowing who I was as I had changed so much. So it's been an incredible journey. And I'm just, I'm really grateful. So yes, you did just see the seam rippers come out. I had made a mistake. I seamed up the side of the bodice that I was supposed to leave open for the zipper, but nothing a good seam ripping can't fix. So, 
I corrected my mistake and I pinned the bodice to the lining and now I am getting it all stitched together. So after stitching the bodice to the lining, I turned the right side to the outside and gave it a really good press. The next thing I do is I hand baste the sleeves together so that way I can sew it at the sewing machine without them moving or shifting or pins being in the way. I have learned that this is the best way to go about this. And then I folded the seam allowance to the inside of it and slip stitched that in place. And the bodice is complete. And so now we're back to the skirt. I had made the decision to line it and to also add the crinoline. And that is what you see me doing now. This dress was put together over just a few days. I got the majority of the work done on the first day. It was actually election day. If you notice my I voted today bracelet that appears. I took the day off to vote, but also to sew. I usually only take off if a kid has a doctor appointment or someone is sick or something like that, or we're going on vacation. I've never taken a day just to take the day and to do what with it, what I choose to do. And so on that Tuesday, I took the day to vote and to sell and that's what I did and it was a very good day a very productive day that crinoline was something to deal with something to cut it shifts and moves it was it was what it was um, I enjoyed doing it while watching The Buccaneers. It's a new period show that is on Apple TV that I am loving. They put out four episodes at once, and so I got to enjoy that. The dresses are breathtaking. 10 out of 10 recommend, if only for the costumes, but it's it's also pretty entertaining. It's about American girls marrying um, lords and dukes and whatnot. It's, it's really cool. And, um, I really enjoyed the diversity in it, but as this dress comes together, I get more and more excited to wear it on the day that marks the vows we made. And it is just a few short weeks away. When I look at the differences in the two dresses, the dress from my anniversary two years ago to the one now, I feel so proud of how far I have come and very excited for what is yet to come. The same feelings that I feel when I look at my husband. He doesn't come here a lot as this is my thing that I get to have just for me, but and if he does come here, he doesn't tell me about it. But honey, if you just so happen to stop by, know that this video is dedicated to you. I hope that when you see me in this dress, you are blown away. Thank you for accepting me as I am and loving me through the mistakes and the uncomfortable parts of growth. So much of who I am is because of you. Happy anniversary, sweetheart. I look forward to many more that are certain and sure to come. So we are now getting very close to the finish line with this dress. And I am just absolutely in love with it. What you see me doing currently is attaching the bodice to the skirt. And after that, I just need to do the finishing work. So I took this big skirt this big ball gown to bed with me. And this is before I got started. I will go in and clean all of this up, 
paint these seams, hem the bottom, put in the waist stay. I will do all of that finishing work that took hours, hours. So I am very excited to finally show you this dress. I even took a belt that I already had um, and covered it with matching fabric, which for some reason I just really love how this belt looks. I'm just really, really excited. So let's get into the final photos. So when I do wear this dress, which I will on my actual anniversary, I'm going to wear it along with all of the jewelry from my wedding because when else do you get to wear it again? I always wear it on my anniversary. The hair clip and the earrings, I mean, I just love it. And also, I'm going to wear the actual shoes from my wedding. And I don't know, it just makes it feel more special. So here she is in all of her glory. I am putting on the belt that I covered and I love this touch. I think it gives it a little bit more of a modern feel and I just love how it pulls my waist in. There's the hair clip from my wedding that I absolutely love. This dress is literally my dream dress. I am so proud and so happy with how I feel wearing it. Not just because it's beautiful, which it is, but because I made it and it makes me feel confident and powerful in ways that I can't even explain, but it's fun and everything about it I love. Absolutely everything. I hope my husband takes me out dancing. We're taking a trip for our anniversary because this dress was meant to be twirled around a dance floor. It is everything a 1950s ball gown should be and I absolutely love it I hope you do too please let me know what you think you guys mean the world to me I know I dedicated this video to my husband which it is but it is also dedicated to you my viewer my supporter my motivator my my sewing circle Thank you for your support over the past three years I have been here. I have been fortunate to have this place where I come to think and share and sew and learn and grow. So show your continued support by leaving me a comment. Let me know what you think of this dress, this video, this channel. I would love to hear what it's been like for you here. For me, it's been so much fun and we are just getting started. And I will see you in the next one that is soon and sure to come.